Hi everyone, well it's time for the big reveal, the next project on the channel, and that will be a Panzer II. Let's get going. When I first started this video channel a few months ago, I started to notice that some of the most popular channels were ones where folks would just take a box, open it up, and show what's inside. So here's my little ode via unboxing. But hang with me, because we will start building and we will start painting fairly soon here. And I do like those magic tracks. And of course the instructions give us some alternatives that we might be able to use to paint our model. But I've got something different in mind, something a little more interesting that I found. If you recall in the last episodes on the T-55, I added a little bit of history and context as to what the build was going to be. And so with that in mind, let's take a look at this project in a historical context. This Panzer II was once part of Panzer Abdulung 190 of the 90th Light Division in North Africa. This particular photograph is reportedly taken at Matur, Tunisia. I hope I said that right. Not far from Tunis, with soldiers of the German 5th Regiment Fallschirmjäger, along with Italian troops standing around the vehicle. And now for the twist. It was captured by U.S. Rangers of the 1st Battalion at El Qatar in Tunisia in late spring of 1943. And as you can see, they wasted no time in remarking the vehicle with American stars and taking out the main armament. The photographs that we're looking at here were taken by World War II correspondent Robert Kappa. And he took quite a few photographs, so we have a fairly extensive library of references. And that's a good thing, because this gives me a lot of views of the vehicle from all different angles. And that'll be really helpful, because that'll allow me to look around the vehicle and find all those little nuances that make this vehicle unique. From the photos, it's pretty easy to see that one of the identifiers is that this Panzer II has a rear stowage bin. While those are not unheard of, it is somewhat of a unique feature. And so rather than like following the instructions and start to build the kit, I decided to go ahead and let's scratch build the stowage bin and get that out of the way first. That's probably not the best of ideas because I'm going to run into a little trouble later on, but we'll talk about that later. In the meantime, with the measurements, I just make a little paper pattern here and I cut it out using a sharp blade. And the reason for this is simply so that I have something visual that I can hold up against the plastic turret just to see if I have the right shape and size before moving on to cutting it out with plastic. Once I'm comfortable with the size and shape, I just go ahead and commit it to plastic. Again, just scoring it a few times, the plastic that is, and it just breaks right off. And with all the parts cut out, it's just a matter of assembling all the different little pieces. And a little bit of a pro tip here, especially when scratch building, Sandpaper and sanding sticks are your best friend. A quick dry fit to see how it looks, and well, it looks pretty good. Like I said, I'm gonna run into a little problem later on, but we'll talk about that when I get there. With that turret box out of my system, let's get back to the kit. Well, here's my little confession, my moment of honesty. I don't quite understand kit interiors. Generally, I just don't have the patience to be working on things that, well, will never really ever be seen. And so if you do enjoy building your interiors, great, more power to you. I admire you for your patience and your dedication. And then with all that said, here I am working on an interior. So why am I working on an interior? Those reference photographs showed some of those hatches were open. There will be views of the inside, especially on the transmission hatch. There's quite a few photos where that is open, so it might be nice to have a little bit of something busy inside of there. And also the commander's hatch is always open as well. The overall color for the interior of this little Panzer II was done with AK Generation 3 Ivory. And the engine and the transmission, Generation 3 Basalt, a nice really dark gray color. With the acrylics dry, then it's time just to go ahead and give this interior a little bit of personality and grit and grime. And for that, I'm using enamels. I'm using AK Africa Dust Effects along with streaking grime for DAK vehicles. I apply these enamels along the edges, in the panel lines, nooks and crannies, just any place where dust and dirt and grime would collect, just to give it a nice, well-lived-in look. And of course, after these enamels set for a little bit, any of the excess can be wiped away with a clean brush, just moistened with odorless thinner. I then switched over to using the AK weathering pencils. The pencils make really quick and easy work of outlining all the different panels. And I just use that and I just trace around all the edges of the plates just to give them a little bit of a scuff and chipped appearance. And I even abraze it across the tread plates just to bring out some of those surface textures. I then switched to the smoke color which is a dark gray and went over a lot of the same areas just to bring in a little bit more detail and depth. And then finally, as a last step, I just use a brush moistened with a little bit of water and blend the colors together and clean up the edges. So now, moving on to the upper hole, this is where it gets to be fun. This is where all the cosmetic changes occur. 
The first thing I tackled were these fenders. I thinned them out a little bit with sanding stick, and now I'm just adding a few little missing brackets with some extra photo etch I have in my stash. Next up, and for whatever reason, the German crew had decided to relocate their spare wheel from the usual holding bracket at the front of the vehicle to a new bracket on the back of the vehicle. And so that means I need to make the empty brackets here on the front of the vehicle, and I do that using some thin plastic strip. And these photos clearly show that there's a jerry can rack that's been added to the left rear fender. So we'll need to fabricate that one as well, also using thin plastic strip. In retrospect, I probably should have used some scrap photo etch and soldered together this jerry can holder. I think it would have been a lot more durable, but the plastic strip will work. So as a bonus to this kit, it does come with a photo etch sheet that does include the German tool clasps but I am not a fan of bending small little German tool clasps. So these printed parts, these are a godsend for me. I love these little guys. Now, they can be a little bit fragile, and a little bit harder to work with, but I found with a sharp blade, you can snip them off, and then with a sanding stick, just kind of even out the bottom side, and then you have a nice surface to attach to your vehicle. Couldn't be more simple. And one more thing here, there is a box, a stowage box, that's been located or relocated on the rear deck attached to the exhaust screen. And so I'm going to fabricate that with some plastic strip as well. And with this little box being completed and then installed on the rear deck here above the muffler, I think we'll stop here on this episode. Pretty much gotten everything that's the modifications that have happened to this little Panzer II. Those have been completed now. In the next episode, we'll get on to painting and getting this thing looking like the captured vehicle that it became. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and if you did, please hit that like and subscribe button. And in addition, I have started a Patreon page, and the link for that is in the description below. If you like this channel, please consider supporting it. Thank you again, and happy modeling. See you next time.